Hey booze, hey, it is your girl, the Rising Phoenix Empath, coming at you from Maryland, and I want to jump on real quick today. I wanted to jump on today, and I wanted to talk about the relational dynamics between a narcissist and it being, and narcissism being d d demonic. I wanted to talk about the dynamics of the, the demonic narcissist and how this is a very spiritual thing. As most, you know, every illness has a uh, spiritual root, every illness, okay? But this is spiritual in nature and it, you know, really manifests physically. But it's really an internal spiritual thing, okay? Now, um, let me just say, I think that all human beings, we all have narcissistic traits. We've all done narcissistic things at one point or another in our lives. It's one, it's one thing to, you know, have narcissistic traits, but another thing to really profoundly be narcissistic, right? Because, you know, just because somebody cheated on you or just because somebody lied to you doesn't necessarily mean that they're a narcissist right it just means maybe they're immature or maybe they're you know they need they got issues other issues you know that they need to deal with and maybe they're just you know um don't have high character or high integrity well we know that everybody who is a liar or a cheater and who doesn't have high integrity they're everyone's not a narcissist right this video specifically pertaining to profi people who profoundly operate under the narcissistic spectrum. Okay? And how a narcissist is born. Oh, and disclaimer to you, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional. And when I say I'm not a professional, I mean I'm not a mental health professional. I am not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I am not a psychiatrist. Right? But I have, you know, had experience dealing with narcissistic individuals. And I can tell you through my experience, what I witnessed and what I saw and what I know to be true about this personality disorder that is very much so rooted in spiritual things. Okay? Now, when a narcissist is created, it's create a narcissist is created through a traumatic event, right? A childhood trauma. This childhood trauma happens probably around the age between three and probably between the ages of three and 12. Okay. Um, it could be uh, violent abuse. Um, it could be uh, sexual abuse. It could be psychological and emotional abuse, or it just could be a, an abandonment wound meaning the child is not cared for by the people that should be caring for this child whether it be a mother or a father or family members or whatever the case may be it, it, it starts here it starts at, you know in childhood and what happens is the event is so traumatic okay the event the event is so traumatic um to the child that upon the trauma taking place to this child, demonic entities, plural, or maybe not a plural, maybe a demonic entity or entities are able to attach to the child through this traumatic event. When these traumatic events happen to the innocent children, it shatters the soul. It shatters the soul of a child. And because the soul is shattered, there is, there is almost a sense of the child losing their wholeness. And 
their soul being fragmented and that is how the entity is able to come in through the portal of deep trauma and grief of this child okay um the child will grow okay the child will grow and as a result of the trauma the child will continue to grow the child will grow and will have a survival mindset now, this is if the child doesn't receive the appropriate help and care that they need after a traumatic event. The child will develop a mode of operation rooted in survival. What that means is they spend their lives surviving and not ever wanting to experience the level of trauma experienced and so as they grow and as they meet people and come into contact with people as a mode of protection they operate in survival meaning they look you know they begin early in life to detach from authentic connection with people as a result of this trauma and this is not a one-time thing this is something that starts at the trauma point and this is something that goes on as the child grows and hits all of the physical and emotional milestones that a child should be meeting well during this time this child has developed a detachment style um, in relationships to prevent them from experiencing further trauma and as time goes on untreated as time goes on and the appropriate help and in, in, in um, resources is not given to this child this will become a way of life for this child surviving and before you know it this child views people as resources, as things, you know, whether it be for money, whether it be for a place to stay, whether it be um, just for some type of provision, whether it be for validation or whether it just be for the energy of this person. Because remember, the soul is fragmented. Okay, now for those of you who don't know, your soul is made up of three components. Your emotions, your mind, and your will. Okay, your emotions, your mind, your and your will. Oh, I'm sorry, four pieces. And your personality. So understand what's take, what takes place when your soul is fragmented from the trauma experienced as a child. Okay, when your soul is fragmented, okay, and a sense of wholeness seeks to exist within this child, the personality, the will, the mind, okay, and the what's the fourth one um and the emotions of this child are fragmented and so they do not operate appropriately their thought process is affected their personality is affected um their um emotional intelligence is affected um and their will will meaning how they operate the decisions they make they make them based off of the trauma they have experienced so it's it's fragmented the soul is and those four aspects of the soul have taken a hit within this child and so they view people as resources right and you know 
they begin to use people to fulfill a need. A lot of it is validation too because they've never received the love, right? This is what it's about. They've never truly received the love. So to receive that love from somebody else validates them even though they can never reciprocate it. They can copy it. They can copy what you do. Right? And that's why they need you too because the soul is so fragmented they don't even know how to show up in the world. And they want to be accepted. And they don't want to experience any more trauma. And so they latch on. They have an addiction to people. And they latch on to people, you know, for money, for somewhere to stay, you know, for them to level up their lives in some kind of way, for the energy, for their personality traits, because again, the soul is fragmented, so they don't even have a personality. Their personality wasn't able to fully develop, along with their emotional intelligence, along with um, their will and their mind. It was it's it's it was basically um, stunted right at the point of the trauma. Okay, so this is why they need people. They need people to survive life. Right now, I don't know if you guys you know are all. And let me say this. I do believe that when the child is traumatized, I believe that their that chances are presented eventually to this person, as it, from starting from a child all the way up into adulthood, um, because you know the entities were able to enter in, and so this child is now greatly influenced by the entities and demonic spirits because of the trauma okay i believe that through childhood and through these milestones i believe that um there's hope for the soul but i also believe that there comes a time when this person reach, reach reaches full maturity that after demonic forces having such profound influence over them and their behavior for so very long that eventually the demonic forces take full control and yes i'm talking possession this is why you look in the eyes of some people and you you know, I remember seeing a picture of the person I was, you know, I was with. And I remember seeing this picture and thinking, he looks soulless in this picture. And he was laughing. But I could tell it was, I can look at that picture. And maybe it's because I'm an empath. But I can look at that picture and tell that it was all a facade. And that this person... I looked at him and those eyes, it just looked empty. And he looked soulless. And I acknowledged that, damn, this picture, he don't look right in this picture. Now, at the time, my gifts haven't come all the way through. They were definitely there. I didn't know how gifted I was. And I didn't. And even when I found out I had certain gifts, I did not trust them fully. Because I'm like, is this, is this real? But as things start to unfold and you start to experience things, you like, wow, okay. I trust my gifts now. I trust them because I haven't been through too much. But that's how I was able to see that picture and ignore what I knew in my heart was true. This person was soulless and this picture was a whole facade of who he wished he was. But was not. Okay, um, so that in my opinion is how the narcissist is created and how they grow and how they operate. And when they hit 
a certain age in life, you ain't changing. You know, they always say, you know, with men and women who date, if they're not already who you want them to be at 40, don't date them. Because they just, they're not changing at this point in life. This is what it is. Right? So, there was a movie um, back in 1998 called The Fallen. Now, in this movie, it was Denzel Washington. And in this movie, he um, headed up a major investigation over a guy. Over I don't know what he, I think he murdered some people. I don't know if he was a serial killer. I can't remember. I saw the movie many times, but it's been years and years since I've seen the movie. So, I can't remember all the details. Right? But I know that he... Um, played a big part in this guy being captured and this guy got the, he was a murderer he was definitely a serial killer this guy got the death penalty well this guy was very demonic and very intertwined into the demonic arts okay and um, when he died there was a room full of people when he died. When he died, his spirit was able to attach to somebody's spirit, to somebody's body in the room. Now, throughout this movie, this demon was trying to get him. Was just really focused on hurting him and trying to get him. But the demon could only live through a person. If he died and there was nobody's body that he could inhibit, the demon would die. Right? So when he was executed, he jumped onto somebody else. So in the movie, okay, this demon is trying to get Denzel Washington through the whole movie. And all this demon had to do was touch you. And he when the demon touched you, he was in you. And he would touch you using somebody else's body. So he was jumping through the whole movie. He was jumping from body to body. His friend's body, his family body, just doing little devious stuff trying to get him. Right? And, um... That it, it's that you and I would recommend this movie. It's called Fallen. He got, he got it, and he figured out a way to beat it, or or at least to try to beat it. He had to get that demon alone and kill him, and then make sure that there was no no life around who that demon could inhibit. Okay. And so, this movie, you know, this, this demon was something. Just going from body to body. You know, and he needed a host. That's the key. The demon needed a host to survive. And it's much like that with the narcissist. And this is why they have an addiction to people. Because their souls are so fragmented. They cannot be on their own. They cannot sit with themselves. They cannot be on their own. They're fragmented. Their souls are fragmented. And so they need people. They need people to validate them. They need people to support them. They need people to show them all the love. They need people to control because they can never again be vulnerable to the type of abuse and attack that they experienced as a child. And so it becomes without, and let me just say this, they don't even realize that this is what they're doing. Unbeknownst to them, they don't know what's happening to him, them. They don't know why they are like they are. They don't know. Some of them maybe do find out, but... A lot of them don't have no idea why they operate the way that they do. Right? And so, they need people. And a lot of narcissists will have a lot of people on the sidelines. And they use these people 
for different aspects of life. They'll use this one for money. They'll use this one for sex. They'll use this one for a place to stay. They'll use this one because this one's a trophy and she makes their image look good. And because they don't have a soul, they don't have a personality. They don't have a, they don't have will. They don't have emotions. They don't have, um, a mind. They do have these things, but these things are greatly distorted because of the soul, which again is comprised of the mind, the will, the personality, and the emotions. And all four of these things have been greatly damaged from the trauma. So they need people to validate them in life. And they use people for different things. Okay. And as a result of their pain that they've never dealt with. In turn. People don't take it. Personal chosen ones. RPE tribe. Do not take it personal. Because while it's wrong. To do that to anybody. While it's wrong. To use people. Like they're objects you know it's wrong obviously don't take it personal because this person from childhood has had to learn how to operate in survival and as they grew older they ha they learned how not only to operate in survival but they also acknowledge their flaws with their soul and personality. And because they have no idea how to function in the real world, they need people that they can copy from, that they can steal from, that they can take from, that will level them up and make them look normal. Make them look good. And so don't take it personal because while you are greatly damaged and hurt as a result of this narcissist, I want you to know that you are a casualty of their war. And every day they wake up, right? And I'm talking about the narcissist who is who has not tried to to heal and um who have not tried everything in their power to address the trauma work through the trauma process the trauma and heal because i'm telling you this thing happened as a child and from childhood this was their mode of operation and it's not this is why they say they don't change it's if they do it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And a lot of them are not strong enough to be able to do that work. Because it will break them. It will break them. And I'm not trying to make you sympathize or empathize with the people that hurt you with the narcissist. But I'm letting you know that this is a very spiritual and demonic thing. And over time overtakes the individual soul, which is why they're able to do and say the things that they do and say, which is why they're able just to be so cutthroat with the people who've been nothing but loyal and down for them. They will lie to anybody. They will steal from anybody. They will take from anybody. Nobody. And I do believe that they feel. I do believe that. No way you're going to be with somebody 5, 10, 15, 20 years or even a year and not feel a certain kind of way about them. But I want you to understand that even if they care for you, their need for self-preservation will always outweigh their feelings for you. And even in that, even when the, if they have feelings for you, I need you to understand that their version of love is very flawed. These people can decide to stop loving you 
and it shuts everything off because again the soul is fragmented so the emotions and the mind and the personality it's nothing for them to several ties with you and simply stop loving you but when they love you in their minds it's true and real and it's their version of love at the time but I want you to understand that living in survival for a period of 20 30 and 40 years has given these people the ability to be able at any time start and stop loving at will so when they said they loved you in the moment they did feel greatly for you but again understand that their version of love is so flawed and so conditional and that they're not it's not we're not dealing with the normal psyche of a human this is this again is what dehumanizes the narcissist because you're human you cannot I don't care what somebody does to you or what they say to you you cannot just stop loving somebody well this is this is the perception of a whole person with a whole psyche, with a whole personality, a whole uh, mind, with whole emotional intelligence, and who can make good, integral decisions and want to because the will is intact so I don't know who I'm talking to right now but I need you to know that if you're experiencing the heartbreak of being with somebody like this I want you to know one there is an end in sight for your sorrow and pain. Two, deal with your hurt. Deal with the, your experience. Unpack it with somebody. Um, a professional specifically. Unpack it and deal with it because empaths, RPE tribe, chosen ones, We need you to show up exactly how God created you. If we are to bring the vibration in this world up, if we are to be the light in a very dark world, we need you to show up. And you can't show up as your optimal self. You can't show up with that bright light shining. You can't show up as a light worker. You can't show up as a healer. You can't show up as an encourager. You can't show up as an empath until you have unpacked the trauma that this person put you through and so chosen ones it's our responsibility not to just get over it and let time go past we must deal with our issues you must deal with them okay you must deal with them we must unpack what has happened if you have insurance Go on your insurance website and look under behavioral health for the resources that you have. If you don't have insurance, and I'm not, you know, if you don't have insurance, go on Fiverr and hire a therapist, hire a coach, hire a self-love coach, hire somebody that can talk to you like a therapist. And I'm not saying that that should be utilized as opposed to mental health care but we are living in a time where there are people who just don't have the resources of insurance and even if they do because the mental health thing in the United States is so vast it is almost impossible to find a mental health provider everybody is booked to capacity that's a real thing too. So 
be you know google resources in your community in your hometown in your state that's one because they're not they're nonprofits all over the place that can help you unpack this and that can help you but be um you know kind of you utilize your resources too. go ahead go on a fiver and see what you find under therapy and under coaching and under those things somebody that can help you unpack this because we have a destiny to fulfill and while it wasn't anything per, uh, personal maybe on the narcissist's um, side I want you to understand that it becomes very personal and I want you to understand that by the time they leave you, they hate you. And it's not because you've done anything. It's because they have to hate you. And then they have to get everybody else to hate you. So that when they move on, it, it could be reconciled in their own headspace. This is what the narcissist does. And... The cycle, they're, they're on to somebody else. I want you to know that it's nothing to be jealous of because you, my friends, you have experienced the very worst of it. These poor, unsuspecting people have no idea what they're in for. And you do. So I want to tell you I'm proud of you. I want to tell you kudos for you. I want to tell you to do the work in past. That's why we are chosen. We're chosen because we're willing to do the work. To vibrate higher than people who won't. Which is the majority. Many are called. Everybody's called. Few are chosen because there are only few strong enough to really unpack it and deal with the shadow. And that's what sets us apart from everybody else, chosen ones. And God smiles upon you for being willing to do that, even though it could be a very painful process. I want you to know you're loved in this space and in this place. And I want you to know I did this video not so you could empathize with the narcissist or feel sorry for them or give them another chance. No, I'm doing this to let you know that demonic forces are at play. And wow, in the physical, the narcissist. It's not about you. They just want to use anybody they can use. Spiritually. That demon wanted to attack you. Unbeknownst to the person. To the host. That is inhibiting those demons. They wanted to attack you. Because they knew. That you are a chosen one. And that you are are destined for very, very great things. And so while it wasn't personal for the actual narcissist, those demonic entities knew exactly what they were doing. Hmm. I want you to know and to detach from these people and understand that there's no level of love or help that you can ever give that will help this person. At this point, only God can. You detach. Walk away. Don't respond. And you will go on to heal, process, and unpack what has happened to you. And you will be able to move on into a healthy, loving relationship. And it won't be a cycle. They're moving on to cycles. I know for a fact the person I was dealing with within the year had at least three people that he was um, announcing his love to on social media. There were at least three people that he was madly in love with in the year 
that we broke up. These people move on to cycles. There's no happy ending. And they know every relationship will end the same because they know they're never going to change their behavior. And they don't want to. With that said, chosen ones, sometimes a loss isn't a loss. And I want you to know I'm proud of you. Again, I'm proud of you. Keep on moving on with integrity. You know, through the smear campaigns, through the people ganging up and gang stalking you, through the narcissist getting your friends and your family to betray you. To the narcissist being able to go to your friends and go to your family and make lies up about you. So that everybody hates you. I want you to know that everybody that you have lost as a result of this person didn't like you any damn way. They didn't like you. They didn't like you. If this piece, because these people, let me just explain y'all. These people, I hate to say it, but these people are really lower level people. And their circumstances don't get, you know, are really lower level. And let me tell you something. I pride myself in being an African American woman and seeing how over the generations, my family has been able through every generation to rise, rise and rise. That's not what I'm talking about when I say low level. I'm talking about these people don't have no integrity. No sense of right and wrong. No conscious. And they will do anything. They will have sex with anybody. They don't have a preference. Male or female. They would even maybe screw an animal. These people are unconscionable. I need you to understand that. They're under demonic influence. And eventually that influence turns into full blown possession. These people cannot be helped by you they're on their battlefield this is their war and the good thing about the battlefield the good thing about their war is that it's not your war although you were a casualty of the war you can get up and walk off that battlefield at any time and I pray that you do I pray, 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 pray that you do. Now, I'm going to do a video. This has been on my heart. On how we have behaved toward the end of that relationship. Fighting to coexist with that demon. Fighting to save a relationship that never was. Fighting being triangulated with all these different people. And just, you know, being gaslit. And just how, as a result of the trauma that we have experienced, how we responded. And how we... Did some reactive abuse. And in turn there is some guilt there. Because we found ourselves feeling at the end. Well am I the narcissist? Because I didn't said some pretty messed up stuff. This person had me hating people. And people playing on my phone. I'm playing on people. Like we, it was. Re Let me tell you something. It was ridiculous. And I'm so embarrassed. That this person had me wallowing with pigs. And I'm embarrassed to even speak of it. But it's something that we got to talk about. Because we have to talk about it to be able to move on. And I want you to know we take accountability for our actions. And I was able to see how some of this was karma for me. Because I took a person's word for it. And I knew that 
so the people that I was being triangulated with, he hurt these people, but he validated it to me and I was okay with that. I believed him. And yeah, I was deceived too, but a woman should never be okay at another woman's pain. Even if, you know, sometimes life happens and people, you know, people choose other people. But that's not what happened. It was very sinister in nature. <sighs> that's what I thought happened. I thought that, you know, he chose. But no, it was very sinister in nature. And I need us to acknowledge and talk about that and talk about how, you know, being manipulated and in turn, we kind of aided and abetted in somebody else's pain. And, you know, it's something that I think in order to move on, you have to kind of talk about. But I mean, these people, these women were low down. These women, if, if, put it this way. If, if I got dressed up on a Friday night and went out, these people wouldn't be where I'm going. They would go somewhere else that, that I would never hang out at. Like, that's the level of people. Like, that. these people don't even, didn't even deserve your attention. These people wouldn't even be able, like, I, I hate to say it, and I hate, because I'm not an elitist, and I hate people with elitist attitudes, but I'm telling you this to tell you that that narcissist will have you in the, at, the, at the bottom of a bucket with scallywags that you wouldn't even normally even, they would never even have access to you over normal circumstances. You would have nothing in common with these people. And and some of them were, you know, I take that back. Because some of them were nice. You could tell that they had, they were nice women. Like, okay, no. And they had potential, right? But then there were some that was just as doggish. And just as shady. And just as morally bankrupt as him. And you're just like, wow, pe there are people who do stuff like this? There are people who would do something like this for a dollar? You'd put your child in harm's way for some money? You would perpetuate somebody? You would steal drugs from your job and perpetuate your child selling these drugs that you stole from your job? And she's putting her life and her freedom at risk to sell these prescription drugs that you got from you. Like these are the kind of people, this is the kind of stuff. You just need to just get, walk, run off this battlefield. This is not your war, not your battle. And I'm going to again do a video on the our behavior. And what we did to survive and what we did to try to salvage this phony fake relationship. Gotta talk about it. Because I think that that clips a lot of people up too. You know. And because we're the bad guy. We're the bad guy in some people's eyes. I don't care what you think. Because I, I was there. I know what happened. I know what happened. And in spite of... Of, this is what I'm going to say. In spite of the triangulation I experienced with these other women, there is nothing that he could have done or said to me that would get me, because I believe that this happened to me, that would get me to try and um, scam money out of these women. I don't have to like you to be an honorable person. I don't, I would never do that. And I believe that that was done to me. Like there's nothing, I wouldn't do nothing like that to a stranger. I wouldn't do something like that to somebody I didn't like. I wouldn't do something like that to an enemy. And that's how you can tell in these situations the good from the bad. 
the evil from the benevolent. There's just some things I'm not willing to do and it has nothing to do with my like of you. But if I'm honorable and if I'm good, I don't pick and choose on who to bestow that honor and goodness upon. So empaths, smile and know you are on the right side. I don't care what happened. I don't care how you behaved. I don't care. You're on the right side of this empaths. Okay. Until next time, until we meet again, I love you very much. And I hope that this video helps you. Let's talk about it in the comments. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Have a good one.